Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. And what I tend to do is um, I either listen to, well, I not listen, I either read people's um, recommendations on what I should talk about or I'll find something that I think is helpful to my my listeners or my followers or my subscribers. And sometimes it's just about legislation and stuff like that. And every now and then I'll stick my nose in a bit of what's happening in the media and um, try to make sense of it, at least to myself. So that's what I did today. I decided to look at what's happening um, with Trump being here and listening to his speech listening to Theresa May's speech and listening to the Queen's speech and seeing how, whether or not I felt it, they had integrity, um, the actual words, and also whether or not there was any hidden meaning in what they were saying. Because sometimes, you know, politicians, not really talking about the Queen because she's doing her role um, as the head of the country, but no, I was talking about more the politicians and how they speak in a language that only politicians know how to speak and how we, the public, sometimes do not understand. So I've now given what they've said my own meaning. I've interpreted it in a way that I can understand. And you may agree with me, you may not. But, you know, that's what we're here for. We're here to give our opinions. We're here to comment on different opinions and, you know, we're not necessarily going to agree. So, um, let's start off with the Queen. And I think, yeah, she said we have a thriving economic relationship. And I guess from where they sit, because they are so wealthy, it will look as though it's thriving to them. But to people on the outside, the people on the street, the people who do not have jobs, the people on universal credit, the people who are disabled, the people who are retired, the pensioners, the people who are waiting hours and hours for to see a GP, it's not a thriving relationship at all. But they won't be able to see that because they are protected by wealth. So they can only see through that um, that mirror. They can only see through that viewpoint. They can't see what we see. And it's just like I made the analogy before. You know, we cannot live somebody else's experience. An individual has to live it. That's why I like seeing some of those shows where the rich person goes, spends days as, as a, a poor person. Um, or they go into someone's house and they spend days without anything and then they swap places because it gives them an opportunity to know what it's like when the shoe is on the other foot. The Queen, the people like Trump, the people like Theresa May, the people who've got millions, they cannot see that we are not living in a thriving community. And it's not, it's not against them. They just won't be able to see it unless the tables turn and they have to live it and see it from our point of view. And that's not going to happen. So anyway, it made me um, try to bring us back down to earth. OK, they're saying we have a thriving economy and some people might think that they do. I mean, Trump is forever saying, you know, ever since I got presidency, the economy is thriving. How would he know? Anyway, um, the American national debt is 22.3 trillion as of April 2019. Now, if debt is a sign of thriving, then maybe I've got things wrong. I'm the type of person, I do not like debt. It makes me feel uncomfortable. But maybe people who have lots and lots of millions and billions, maybe they see debt as something positive. I don't know. Um, and what else? The US external debt is 19, I don't know how to say all these bloody numbers, 
Anyways, 19765887 US million in the fourth quarter of 2018 from 19556588 US million in the third quarter of 2018. That sounds like to me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's probably nineteen trillion seven hundred and sixty five billion eight hundred and eighty seven US dollars. That is their external debt. But they're thriving. The UK's external debt is currently six point two billion. But it's matched apparently by external assets. And the UK's national debt is 1.3 trillion, which is peanuts when you think about what America's national debt is 22.3 million. Now, what they did say that was true is that, um, well, Theresa May and Donald Trump, they were saying that they're the largest investors in each other's economy. And I went and I Googled that to see if it was a true and it is true the u.s exported 125.9 billion of goods and services to the uk making it the uk's second largest source of imports the u.s imported 110 billion in goods and services from the contribute oh god looks up the bloody pages and i you know why because I had to do this video again, so I've missed up the pages. Anyway, um, I'll read that bit again. The US imported 110 billion in goods and services from the UK, and the US is by far the UK's largest export market. So it's true. And the UK is the single largest investor in the United States. British companies have invested more than 540 billion in the US, accounting for more than 15% of all inbound foreign direct investment. The US is also the largest investor in the UK. So it's, it's really comforting when they do say something that appears to be true, you know, because it is worrying when you hear this stuff. Um, they also said in one of their speeches they have common values and shared interests. Well, we all know what those common values and shared interests are. Um, it's immigration, meritocracy, meritocracy, keeping the country white, and trade. That is, that's their common values and shared interests. Um, Trump was saying... Um, one of the greatest undertakings in history is planned while he's here. And he did say in, you know, because somebody asked him in one of the press conferences if the NHS was on the table and he admitted that he was, that it was. So we've got it from the horse's mouth. However, I don't think Theresa May liked the fact that he admitted that and said, of course, it's for under negotiations. It doesn't mean that um, it's going to... It, just because it's on the table, it doesn't mean that it's going to be traded and we, we have a decision and all this kind of ball. You know, it's on the table. It's up for trade. Simple as that. So, um, Trump cites, our fight is against evil. This was one of the disconcerting things that he said. Our fight is against evil and for a world in which goodness and honour may be the foundation of the life of men in every land. Now on the surface, that you wouldn't think there's anything wrong with that statement, would you? I'm going to say it again. Our fight is against evil and for a world in which goodness and honour may be the foundation of the life of men in every land. The only problem that I see with that is with the word evil. Evil by whose definition? Because you have you have people, you know, different religions who think other religions are evil. You have um, people who have been um, abused who thinks the perpetrator is evil. You have different definition of what is evil, what is good and what is evil by whose definition? Now, Trump has already said who's evil in his definition. 
the terrorists, which I'm not even going to make a comment here. The terrorists, the foreigners, the illegal immigrants, criticizers of Trump, although he calls them um, negative, what do you call them? Negative influences or something. And anyone who speaks against the status quo. And the problem with that is that if that is a far right definition of what is evil, then of course people of colour have a problem, are going to face a very, very big problem. Because when they're in power, that is what they want to root out, what they perceive as evil. And we're the evil ones by their definition. So I found that statement a bit disconcerting. It might have gone over somebody else's head, but you know me. Um, what else? He said something. Else. Trump said, we must exercise rights. This is the most disturbing thing he said that I picked up. We must exercise rights given to us by the almighty God. Now, how does he know what rights have been given to us, in quotes, by the almighty God. That is some scary stuff, that is. Because, you know, if he's going by the Bible, we know that certain sectors, certain people in the Bible were disadvantaged based on race, based on um, colour, and it was based on the people who wrote it that gave that interpretation a certain meaning. It was written in a way. It, that's not the original Bible. We all know that. The King James isn't the original Bible. But it was written in a way that enslaved black people or people of colour, or foreigners, or whatever, and it was worded in that way to make it look like we should enjoy it and all that kind of crap. So when you're thinking, when he's speaking out like this about we must exercise written rights given to us by the Almighty God, how does he get those rights? How, what is his source? His source has to be the Bible doesn't it really? What, what, what other way can he get those rights? So that is some scary stuff. By saying that, I think out of everything he said, that made me feel the most uneasy. And then Theresa May, she said, we have deep and special relationship between the USA and the UK that ensure our safety and our security of others around the world too. And it is a relationship that helps to ensure there are jobs that employ people here in the UK and in the United States that underpins our prosperity and our future. That is a relationship we should cherish. It is a relationship we should build on. It is a relationship we should be proud of. Where are the bloody jobs? I mean, they're on a totally different planet. Totally different planet. I think just because they see all the backbenchers in jobs and they see all the people in, in their little houses or whatever have jobs, they think people have jobs. I mean, they've sold off every possible asset. Britain has sold off every possible asset that they could possibly have to all different people all over the world. Where's the prosperity? We're de-industrialised. We're de Where is the prosperity? Where are these jobs going to come from? Increase of joblessness in the UK, increase of joblessness in the US of A. So where are these jobs going to come from, I ask you? I tell you, they don't live in our world. On jobs and prosperity in the UK, I decided to look it up. And once again, they've got all these bloody, I don't know why they can't just write ordinary numbers, especially when they've got lots of digits. I'm not good at maths. So I hate things with lots and lots of digits because I can't work out whether they're trillions, billions or what. So um, anyway, fortunately, this actually says the word thousand, which will help me a lot. And it says the number of unemployed persons in the United Kingdom 
increased to 1085.20 thousand in April of 2019 from 1060.50 thousand in March of 2019. That's, that's a short space in a month. That's a lot. Um, unemployed persons in the United Kingdom averaged 1519.22 thousand from 1971 from 1971 until 2019, reaching an all-time high of 3090,000 in July of 1986. I was here then. Hmm, I don't remember that. Anyway. And a record low of 422.60,000 thousand in December of 1973. Now, on jobs and prosperity in the US of A, both the unemployment rate at 4% and number of unemployed persons at 6.5 million edged up in January 2019. The impact of the partial federal government shutdown contributed to the upswing in these measures. Among the unemployed, the number who reported being on temporary layoff increased by 175,000 to 937,000 in January 2019. So where's this prosperity and the jobs? And then um, they were talking about safety and security, you know, when I read her a little bit. Well, there's rumours or what they've been saying in the news or different sources, message of deterrence to Russia. Um, something about 200 pounds of diplomacy, I don't know what that means. Venezuela to get their democracy back via an escalation process. Moscow has sent troops to Caracos. President Trump issues a warning to Iran. UK remains cautious about a threat from Iran. Trump says China is becoming weakened nation like Iran because a weakened nation, because like, because like Iran is a weakened nation. Um, Taiwan is preparing for a Chinese invasion. Uh, China is preparing for war, war with Israel, a war of words with Palestine, Syria and Iran. Israeli airstrikes over the Gaza city, threat of nuclear war between India and Pakistan, a racial divide and a political divide. And then we have the trade wars on top of that. Does that sound like peace and prosperity to you? It doesn't sound like that to me. So... Out of all those different speeches, by the end of it, I started thinking to myself, well, if you're not alert, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss all those little innuendos and those little signs and symbols and whatever words that they use to s that only certain people understand. And people do understand them. And I mean, everybody interprets these words in their own way. Somebody might listen to it and interpret it in a totally different way and say, Black Bright, you're talking a load of tosh. But you know what? That's what I see. That was my interpretation. And that's all for now. Bye bye.